Hi, my name is Wendy Finkley, the Director of Programs for Arts for All Florida, and welcome to Spotlight on Art. This is our virtual art class program that gives us an opportunity to highlight the many wonderful teaching artists we have throughout the state of Florida. Let me remind you that this program is closed captioned, and if you look at the bottom of your screen, you're able to turn that on or off. Today, we're speaking with Yarrow Rees, and she's going to be be presenting part two of her nature journaling videos. Please enjoy. Welcome everyone. My name is Yaro and thank you for joining me today. I'm so happy to be working with Arts for All in Florida to bring art into your home. So as Wendy had said, this is the second part of a two-part video on introduction to art journaling. So in the beginning of the video, we, um, I mean, excuse me, the previous video, we talked about the different materials, which you probably have at hand, crayons, uh, water-based markers, a small uh, kit of watercolors, and um, we uh, created a journal page. On that journal page, we highlighted sunflower and we did a, a representative drawing of the sunflower the leaf, some of the seeds, some things that we had seen in the garden, a blue jay feather, a butterfly and a bee. So when I demonstrated that page, I pretty much ended up with something that looked like this. Not quite like my original sample, which I had gone back into and embellished with some simple stamps, ink pad stamps. So um, for those of you that have difficulty with smaller stamps, uh, I would recommend finding these big chunky foam block stamps. They're very inexpensive and they're usually themed. In this one, I have a butterfly, a collection of butterflies, a bird, a vine. Um, and so on. So let's begin. I want to make sure you have a good cover on your table so that you do not stamp onto a nice wood table. So mostly it's margins we're, we're working with. We just want to doctor this up a little bit and where you see why you can stamp either into or partially into the, the drawings and paintings that you had done. So picking up some green ink, I'm going to create a little bit of a vining effect that I want to run through my Now you could also do this with markers. And then the flowers are attracting butterflies and other pollinators. So I'm going to put a lot of butterflies on here to represent what I had seen out there. And it's nice to just let the ink just um, come off of your ink stamp and fade because that gives it a sort of an antique look, maybe a three-dimensional look as well. So see how quickly that doctored up my, my journal page. I have one big butterfly. I'm going to stamp him down here in this white area. And then you could even take a marker. I have a, have a turquoise marker here and I'm going to come around the edge of that butterfly stamp and put just some and you know that butterfly that he didn't have any antennas so I'll put a couple of antennas there and maybe I'll highlight his body. Yeah. So see what I've done with my stamp? I've gone back with my marker and I've added to it. So some of you are a little hesitant to draw a butterfly. 
Well, think of them as a lot like a flower. They have symmetry, they have a center. So a butterfly has a head and a body. His head is somewhat round. His body is elongated and really made up of a couple of ovals. So you just want to sketch very lightly. Find your butterfly body. Body, the butterflies are all wings. So we're going to come out and establish where his wings probably will end. Then I'm going to come down a bit. Yeah. And they started to tuck in a bit, as I recall. And I can look on this one. He was very similar to the one I saw in the yard. And they just kind of tucked back into his body. So I brought him back in. Now butterflies have upper wings and lower wings, sometimes called hind wings. So the hind wings are usually smaller. And you can just trace around them. In fact, I'm gonna give these wings a little droop because they, I'm trying to represent more of a swallow tail. So that's really it. There's my butterfly. I can work with it as much as I want. I'll give it a couple of antenna. And if he isn't just the same on the right as the left, that's okay, he's flying. I can increase the size of his wings. I can even put some wing spots on him if he had any. And there he is. He's ready to wash over with some paint. In this case, um, I have an accommodation here for anyone who may have difficulty working with these little tiny watercolor kits. I've got this. Now, I purchased this off of Dick Blick, but you can find it on most of the Scholastic websites and even some. Now, there's so many homeschoolers, some of the homeschool websites, but just Google big tablet watercolor. Some of them come in sets of six, um, and you can replace them as you use them up. The same as, I'm going to use a chunky brush that's easier to handle, and... This butterfly, he was a bluish purple color. So same thing, you're just gonna work that around. This one's going to be purple. And I'm going to wash his wings with some of this purple. And you can make him fanciful. He doesn't have to be represented realistically. A quick wash and a pinch, get the water out. Got some clean, and I'm going to add a little fuchsia on here for his hind wings. Oh, maybe his top wings too. And then his body. Always rush your brush, squeeze it out, and use your bladder. <clears throat> that is a pretty nice butterfly. Okay. okay. So, we also can use leaf rubbings. I'm sure at some point all of you did leaf rubbings. It's usually a pretty good idea to get a leaf that isn't too fragile. I have one here, stands up on its own. It's pretty tough. I'm gonna look at both sides and find the one that has the most texture. That's the bottom of the leaf. And when you're doing a leaf rubbing, you always want a blotter. You want something to soften it up. I'm going to place the vein side up and put my final page on top of it. Now, I did not tell you that it is very time consuming to peel a crayon if you soak one in a little water for three minutes. That is the magic number. 
You let it on too long and then it's not gonna come off as well. So I'm gonna leave this in here for about three minutes and see what happens. In the meantime, I have one of my own. So it's just a regular crayon peeled. I'm gonna push it straight down, hold on, stabilize my top page and I will rub. Keep rubbing until you see all the veins and the edges of the leaf. And there you have a perfect botanical specimen of this particular plant. Now, again, another modification, if you are really enjoying this and you care to invest, you can buy block crayons. And these are made primarily from beeswax and they're really great to work with. They have a long side, a short side, and a flat side. You can see that. And they, again, are wonderful for tracing and rubbing leaves. They're easy to hold on to. And you can get really creative. So I think I'll do half a leaf in kind of a copper color and come back and do the other half of the leaf in an orange or kind of a fall look. That's something you might want to add to your pepper top. And then again, a great modification is to take, find a big leaf like this one here. This is a Bodhi tree leaf. And I have pressed it and I have glued it to a piece of cardstock that makes for rubbing really easy. It's big and easy to handle. And again, you can get super creative with this one. Can use any kind of uh, crayon you want. And it's quite something to watch this magic happen when you reveal the leaf that's hidden under the paper. Great. Okay, so again, he was pressed and glued and pressed again onto a piece of cardstock. So you don't have a flower press and you, no one uses dictionaries anymore. I make my own. So I have two pieces of rigid cardboard. These happen to be cutouts from picture framing. I'll have two of those and some blotters. Blotters are just scrap paper that you cut up and will fit inside those two cardboard pieces. Then in order to press a leaf, you'll collect a leaf. And I recommend the day you collect the leaf or leaves that you press them. Shiny side, top side down. In this case, I can fit two. Put a couple of your blotter pages on top. Stack it up inside your cardboard, your rigid cardboard, and just some simple office spring clips. And you can clip them on. I like to use four. You can also do this with rubber bands. It's a little more fussy. These work great. So that is a simple press and you can take it right out into the field with you and press the moment that you collect so they don't curl. And you can do this with flowers. Um, just to try, take, what I try to do is trim off anything that's too um, thick, like the very point of the wing. You can always draw that back on. So that's something that we do. And then again, 
to go kind of a, a mixed media kind of way. I did beauty berry. Now the beauty berries were fruiting like crazy in my neighborhood up till a couple of weeks ago. Now the birds have eaten most of the beauty berries. I went out for a walk this morning and this is all I found. Usually these um, are just thick. These would be big clusters of these beautiful magenta leaves. So I want to do a mixed media kind of page. I have pressed one of the leaves and I will try to replicate what I had seen, what I am seeing right here. I've got um, one, two leaves down, reposition. And I have a couple of leaves up. Wow, I put him under the water page and he still printed really well. Okay, there we are. So I've got something started here that looks somewhat, somewhat like this. I'm going to connect with my brown marker because the, I noticed the beauty berry um, was very woody. The, the, the stems were very, very woody. So I'll lay it right next to my drawing. My. And I'm going to add a little permanent marker just in case some of that fades out when I do my wash. I picked a magenta marker, simple. Now, there are things called nodes, and the nodes are where these leaves come out of. And in my observation, I noticed that is where the berries were growing. See, the closer you look, I just took my, my pencil and I put nodes at the base of every leaf on the stem. And that's where my beauty berries fruited from. So on each of those nodes, I am going to draw some beauty berries with my magenta marker. There we are, starting to look like what I have here. I know it's a beauty berry. <clears throat> I'm going to write that at the top. Now, you know, I've already said in the previous video, I love boxes. Boxes help me stay focused. <clears throat> I could put some field notes in here and say that, uh, that these um, seeds were coming out at the nodes or that this happened in October. So let's date it October. And it happened in my hometown. Okay. Hey, I love the big tablet watercolor. I'm going to wash with that. I'm going to try to imagine what the sky looked like when I pick this this morning. 
The sun was up. So it was pretty bright out. I'm coming right across the page, across the leaves and the berries. And then maybe I saw my neighbor's grass in the background. And then because I always take black tablets out because black just covers everything up. I'm gonna come into my little black and that's the paved road. There's too much black on my page. So I'm going to use my blotter to get rid of it and then try to wash it out a little bit better with some paint. All right, let's give a contrast to the title box, Beauty Theory. And there you have a journal page, mixed media journal page. Now when that dries, again, I can go back in and I can stamp around the edges. I might even be able to do that right now because my media dries pretty quick. I'm gonna give it a few butterflies. I like my vine, oh, there's a bird. Right there, under my friend's feeder. I could go back in later too and add some field notes and have quite a remembrance. Now, remember I told you about using a page, a, a scrap page to test out your watercolors? Well, I always end up with something like this. So I don't want to throw this away, but it's really pretty full of pigment, so I can't use it as a test page anymore. So I'm going to do some doodling because doodling is really important with art journaling. The more you doodle, the more it becomes yours, the more you expand your, your art. So I'm going to say that this big pink bird that I keep seeing flying over. You know, I think it's an ibis. No, it's a uh, roseate spoonbill. So I'm gonna draw him on there. Just, just doodling around. I saw a blue, I saw a blue fish in a pond when I was on the river. So I'll give him a little fish shape. And a little fish head and a fish eye. Something here reminds me of a frog. They're really easy to turn into flowers. So just play around and experiment with your doodles. Um, draw some circles and spirals. And what do you have? You have a snail. Yeah. Decorate your whole page with these snails. Okay, you can do a border in snails. They're super simple. Doodles happen really fast. And the last thing I want to leave you with is I have a huge collection of old magazines and print media, newspapers, advertising that comes in the mail. And anytime I see a plant or a flower, a bird, anything I might find on one of my walks, I cut it out. And I just put it in my nature box. I have a box with nothing but someone sent me a card. It had beautiful swallows on it. So I will be putting those in my art journal the next time I see 
a swallow in my neighborhood. Calendars are a wonderful resource. This was the little um, sample page on the back of the calendar that I had bought. It was all birds. So I had 12 months of birds and eggs and birds nests. And I will be cutting that out. Also, every time I try to teach myself how to draw or paint a different plant, this was an exercise in drawing bamboo, which for me was difficult because a bamboo is not a tree, it's a grass and I'm more of a tree person. So what I can do with this rather than throw it out, if you happen to have a cookie cutter or just a simple foam shape of a leaf, you could put it down on here, trace out the leaf and then cut it out and you will have this wonderful collage material. You can also do that with the print material. So I hope that that's been helpful for you today and that it will get you started in a more fun and artistic way of capturing the natural world around you. And I promise you that you will become closer to the natural world once you start observing it and recording it. And I have journals that go back for years and years and years. Just date them put your location, sometimes the temperature, or at least the time of year. And um, I promise you, you will, you will get hooked. So great job. Please comment below and share with a friend. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to post your own creations or ideas um, on social media. Uh, media. <laughs> social media using our tag at arts for all florida that's the number four thank you and see you again next time